Our scripture reading for today comes from um, 2 Samuel, uh, the continuing chronicle of the rise of David to the uh, king, kingship of the nation of Israel. Hear now the word of God. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God. And Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fat leg. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. David returned to bless his household, but Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants' maids, as any vulgar fellow might shamelessly uncover himself. David said to Michal, it was before the Lord who chose me in place of your father and all his household to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, that I have danced before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in my own eyes, but by the maids of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in honor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> well, even though I didn't go to school in West Virginia to learn West Virginia history, I do know that the capital of West Virginia was not uh, always from the beginning in our fair city of Charleston. My quick internet research uh, told me, informed me, that the state capital, uh, the location of the state capital, shuttled, it said, back and forth between Charleston and Wheeling until 1885, which was a little more than 20 years after the formation of the state of West Virginia, when it was finally set here in Charleston. And of course, the shining symbol of Charleston as the state capital, and so the seat of state government, is the state capitol building itself with its spectacular, recently refurbished golden dome. That dome leaves no doubt that here is some place of special significance in the life of West Virginia. But we just read how David, now king of all Israel, of a united Israel, how he set out to bring the ark of God which, like our own state capital, had moved around quite a bit, to bring it up to the city of David, that is, up to Jerusalem. Now, bringing the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant, to Jerusalem would make Jerusalem both the religious and the political capital of the, 
the newly united kingdom of Israel. <clears throat> There's a lot of history and mystery surrounding the ark of God, uh, which we really aren't going to go into right now. But for our purposes right now, let's just keep in mind that the ark represented the very presence of God among the people of Israel. Now the ark itself is generally assumed to have been some sort of large chest, uh, chest-like a container in which certain very sacred religious objects were believed to, to be kept. Among them, the staff of Moses and the tablets of the law that Moses had brought down from Mount Sinai. Our text says that the ark was called by the name of the Lord of hosts who is enthroned on the cherubim. Truly the ultimate seat of power. The ark was literally believed to be the throne of God. So it was necessary for David to, to bring the ark permanently up to Jerusalem in order to establish Jerusalem as both the city of David and the city of God. Now we might imagine that the process of moving the Ark of God up to Jerusalem would be a very serious, stately, dignified affair of pomp and circumstance. We might imagine a very long, orderly procession of, uh, of dignity. David had, after all, enlisted 30,000 men of Israel to accompany him and the ark to Jerusalem. We might imagine that procession accompanied by solemn, grand, dignified liturgical music, something like the ancient Israelite equivalent of Gregorian chant or something like that. And however we might imagine the seed of David and 30,000 companions traveling with Israel's most sacred relic, we would most certainly Imagine the scene as, above all, dignified. We Presbyterians, of course, would also expect everything to be done decently and in order. But what actually happened was anything but that. In fact, at least in some eyes, the whole spectacle was thoroughly indecent, disorderly, and downright undignified. The text paints for us a picture of the, the raw, unrestrained, unrestrained exuberance demonstrated by the King of Israel and his people as they traveled up to the soon-to-be-sanctified holy city of God in the company of the very presence of the Lord God of Israel. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. Instead of a solemn, stately, dignified procession carried out with military and ecclesiastical precision, imagine instead an unruly, undignified mass of people singing and dancing wildly in the presence of their God, whirling madly around the ark on which they perceive the Lord to be seated. And in the middle of this whirling mass of exuberant worshipers, picture Picture, if you will, the nearly naked king of Israel himself dancing with all his might more wildly than all the others. 